Should we start the lecture? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Uh, initially, there was some problem of the host. Sayed Asash he was the host, and uh, that created problems. Anyhow, um, we start the lecture. If uh, if you recall the previous lecture, in which my uh, uh, my last point, rather, I concluded that previous lecture with uh, the topic of narratology, and that was just a brief discussion about narratology. Uh, in which I discussed Grimes model and uh, the model of Roland Barthes. Two models I discussed, if you recall that point. Now, I start today's lecture with the topic of narratology. I resume the same discussion, but let me clarify the background that why is it necessary to discuss narratology? Normally, narratology is not discussed in the area of uh, modern literary theories. Uh, we talk about some major theories, for example, uh, post-colonial theory, feminist criticism, eco-criticism, Marxist criticism. Uh, these are the major uh, psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic criticism. These are the major theories that are normally discussed. Um, but I have uh, tried to uh, uh, throw light on structuralism and uh, along with structuralism. Now I feel a need to discuss narratology. Now there are two options. Some of the books they have discussed narratology as part of the uh, structuralism. Uh, and I can quote the book of uh, Hans Burton. If you read that book, you will find narratology in the chapter of uh, structuralism. But some of the books, they discuss it as a separate uh, critical theory. For example, in the book of uh, Peter Barry, if you read the book of Peter Barry, you will find narratology as a separate modern literary theory. So we can discuss it as a part of uh, structuralism and also as a separate modern literary theory. The way you, you can apply uh, for example, feminist criticism or eco-criticism or Marxist criticism or post-colonial theory on a literary text. In the same way, you can also use some of the narrative techniques on a literary text and they can improve your understanding. If you interpret a narrative, uh, a literary text in the light of narratology, that can enhance your uh, understanding. Anyhow, that I will discuss later on, but I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, narratology, it is also a separate area. You can treat it as a, a separate modern literary theory and uh, also uh, as part of the structuralism. So you depend on that you treat it as a part of uh, uh, structuralism or as a separate modern literary theory. But today I just talk about the ma major areas of narratology. Uh, which, which, which you can use um, in the interpretation of a literary text. The first one is narrator. I have already talked about the narrator that normally there are two narrators. One is narrator character, that narrator who is part of the uh, story that is also called homodiagetic narrator. And uh, uh, there is uh, a heterodiagetic narrator when the narrator is not part of the story, rather that is outside the story. And uh, in the previous lecture, I told you in de detail that what would be the impact of uh, a homodiagetic narrator when the character is part of the story in which I quoted the novel of, for example, Great Expectations, when Pip is part of the story, or for example, uh, um, The Kite Runner, where, wherein uh, Amit is part of the story. So many other novels, and when the narrator is not part of the story, when the narrator is outside the story, so each narrative technique has its own impact on the uh, world of the story, on the narrated are the situations and events and the story which is recounted. So they have their own part. If you interpret a novel in the light of homodiagetic narrator, 
that will give you one interpretation. But if, if you interpret uh, a novel in the light of uh, a heterodiegetic narrator, when the narrator is not a character, so that gives you a different interpretation. So this was just a recapitulation. Okay. It is also important to know whether there is uh, one narrator or there are many narrators. It is not necessary that you have only one narrator. There can be more narrators. For example, in the novel Wuthering Heights, there are more narrators. There is a major narrator, primary narrator, and there is a secondary narrator. Uh, the one who introduces the entire narrative is the main narrator. And uh, then after that, we can have a secondary narrator, we can have a tertiary narrator, uh, one narrator that leads to another narrator. For example, there is someone who says that he has a story to uh, share with the listeners. And then within that story, he introduces another story. And that is narrated or quoted by another narrator. Within that second story, there is yet another third story that is narrated by another narrator. So we can have different narrators. It is not necessary that the entire novel is restricted just to one narrator. There can be many narrators. Besides narrator, we have uh, try to try to keep the uh, mic silent. There is an option of uh, unmute or mute. So just keep it mute. Okay, the second element of uh, 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 a narrative is the narrative. Uh, it is not necessary just to focus on the narrator. You can also have the option of the narrative that if there is a narrative, who is that narrative and what is the relationship of that narrative with the narrator? The relationship of the narrator and narrative that can develop a strong background for the interpretation of that narrative. For example, the novel of Mohsin Hamid, uh, The Reluctant Fundamentalist. When we look at the relationship of the narrator with the narrative, the one who is sitting in front of the ma major character, Changiz. Now looking at that relationship, that gives us a strong background for the interpretation. And uh, that tells us that uh, Changiz, who was actually living in America, and uh, now he is in uh, Lahore, he has come back to Lahore, there are, there are different reasons and there's a background of that coming back to Lahore. And then he, why is he trying to address that narrative? What is the need to address that narrative? And what is the need to convince that narrative? It means that he is narrating the story from the point of view of the American. He is, we Pakistanis, we need to convince the Americans that the identity which is developed uh, of Pakistanis in terms of uh, terrorism, that, uh, that, is, that is not acceptable. So uh, I mean to say that looking at the relationship between the narrator and narrative, that gives us a uh, uh, strong background for the interpretation. So if there is at least one narrator in any narrative, there is also at least one narrative. It means that there is also a possibility of looking at the narrative. Now I'm not going into detail though, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, a great detail of the narrative. And uh, let me tell you that this lecture I have uh, taken from the book of uh, Gerald Prince. The title of that book is Narratology, the Form and Functioning of Narrative. So, uh, and this whole lecture, it is based on the first chapter of uh, this book. There is too much detail about uh, the narrative that who is narrative, what is narrative, what are the various signs and what are the various uh, textual indicators which can show that uh, if there's this particular sign that shows that there is a narrative. So then you can read that uh, detail, but my point is that there is also a possibility of the narrative and uh, developing the relationship of the narrator and narrative that can uh, gives us much food for our critical thinking. Then we have the <clears throat> narration the process of uh, narrating. Uh, okay, if there are some students who face problem in connecting uh, with the Zoom, uh, 
uh, either they get a proper password from the coordinator. I think you have been uh, you have been you have been informed through uh, uh, SMS that what is your proper password. So try to uh, try to confirm that correct password from the coordinator. Okay, so uh, the third element is uh, the narration. There is at least one narration in any narrative per any narrator. For example, if there is one narrator, so it means that that one narrator has his or her own narration. Uh, and there is an example, Peter is very short, he takes a magical <laughs> pen and he, became, he, he becomes very tall. Now, we have a narrator and that narrator has his own narration. He has his own story. If there is another narrator, that second narrator has his own story. If there is a third narrator, that third narrator has his own story. Hello? I was mama salam, hal shop abazis stone stitch that we password of the sea clear nadeya. Ow. Mata CRU will just us to our email ID one year to fall to twenty twenty. Haha, our master of the students from the Mata sent in as a Okay. Okay, those students who have the problem, I will uh, uh, share a text of the coordinator with the CR, and then CR should uh, communicate with those students, those who face problem in connecting with the Zoom, okay? Okay, uh, now, so we have, uh, every narrator has his own uh, uh, narration, and uh, then uh, looking at the narration, there are three types of uh, narration. Uh, there is uh, uh, the first one that is posterior narration. The narration may follow the narrated in time, a situation occurring in a very large number of narratives. This is the most common technique of uh, narration, which is called posterior narration. Now, I have used the word the narrated. The narrated by the narrated, I mean the story or the situation which is recounted, which is told. That is the narrated. And uh, there is an example. Many years ago, John was happily walking down the street when he saw John. When you look back at the past and uh, you, uh, we can also use the uh, term retrospection. When you move into the past and uh, you recall the past and uh, you narrate the past situation. So that is called posterior narration. And this is the most common technique in uh, a large number of uh, narratives. The second technique is uh, anterior narration. It may precede it, a situation which is relatively rare and occurs in the so-called predictive narrative. When you predict or when you make use of prediction, you predict that something like this will happen. So that is called anterior narration. Though this narrative technique is not so frequently used in uh, majority of the novels, but there is a possibility of the use of anterior narration. Some of the writers, they can use this narrative technique. Example is 10 years from now, John will be walking happily down the street. Now this is a prediction, like this has not yet happened, but there is a possibility of uh, 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 this fact. He will see John. Ah, you will kill your father, then you will marry your mother. This is also a prediction. So this type of uh, prediction, uh, this can also be exploited as a narrative technique, and this is called anterior narration. And there is a third uh, possibility of the narrative technique, and that is uh, simultaneous narration. Uh, it may also be simultaneous with it, like uh, the narration and the happening they occur at the same time. For example, John is now walking down the street. He sees John. When you narrate and when the something that happens, they, 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 they happen exactly at the same time. Uh, out of all these three techniques, 
uh, I have already told you that uh, posterior narration, that is the most commonly used narrative technique. And uh, that, is, uh, that is the technique which, uh, which is uh, comparatively easier to move back into the past and to recall that past story. And there are some advantages of that technique. Another element in a narrative is uh, temporal distance. Temporal relates to time. That what is the role of time in a narrative? There are some narratives in which the date of the narration is explicitly clearly uh, given, whereas the date of the narrated is not. When the story is narrated, so the time of the narration is clearly mentioned. But uh, the time of uh, the narrated, that is not clearly given. OK. There is an example. Today, June 10, 1943, I have decided to tell the story. Now, I have decided to tell the story. This is the point of narration. This is the narrator. He has decided to uh, narrate the story on June 10, 1943. And that story is of John and Mary. John was very happy. Then he met Mary. Then he became very unhappy. Now, when did it happen? What is the time of uh, this narrated uh, point? That has not been mentioned. Uh, so at time, it, it plays an important role. When you narrate uh, a story and you mention the time of your narration, uh, you already know that every age that has its own characteristic, looking at the history of uh, complete English cult, uh, literature, uh, that gives you the various ages and various periods. And every age, whether it is the Renaissance age, or it is the uh, it is the Elizabethan age, or it is the uh, Restoration age, or it is the uh, it is any other age. Every age has its own uh, traits and uh, typical features. So when you come to know about uh, a particular time, you can you can you can decide that what are the various traits and what are the defining traits of that particular age. And even if you come to know about the time of the narrated. That can, that, that can give you even more detail. There are some in which neither the narrated nor the narration are dated in any way. In some narratives, we do not have any clue uh, in order to know about the time. For example, John was very rich, then he lost a lot of money and he became very poor. Now in such a narrative, then, Everything is left to the reader. It depends on the reader because there is also an approach of uh, reader-oriented uh, uh, interpretation in which, uh, and Roland Barthes, he introduced this uh, uh, idea when he wrote about the uh, author as a text. So reader can also interpret a text. And uh, this particular element of the temporal distance, uh, it is up to the reader uh, who has to decide and who has to uh, interpret that uh, narrated are that story with reference to the time. In some categories of narrative, the diary novel and the epistolary novel, the way, for example, uh, 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 epistolary novel, that is uh, a type of novel and uh, uh, which, which, which is in the form of letters. For example, the time of the narration is often given explicitly and so is the time of the narrated. Now in a diary and epistolary novels in letters, date is important, date has to be mentioned. So there, date and time, they are clearly mentioned. And uh, as in diary, uh, the time of the narrated that is also clearly mentioned, daily basis, date of uh, the day and even happening of the time, that when did it happen? When did this particular event happen that, that, that th th those are clearly mentioned. Okay, besides temporal distance, we have uh, yet another uh, element and that is called duration. Uh, duration is also important when you want to know about a narrative. So you have to look at the duration of the story and duration of the real uh, event. Now a real event that might take place, for example, just few minutes but when you narrate that, 
So that might uh, be narrated uh, uh, by taking more time. And there is a there is a prominent example of uh, uh, such a situation. For example, travelogue. Now, in a travelogue, if you experience something for just a few minutes or even just for a single day, now that single day, the experiences and the recollection and the thinking and uh, uh, the whole imaginative world that takes place just in a single day, when you narrate that, so you extend that to many, many months and many, many years. That is the prominent feature of a travelogue. So duration, my point is that duration is also very important. You have to, uh, you have, sometimes you have to uh, interpret a narrative in the light of the uh, duration. In many narratives, although the duration of the narrated is specified and it is stated that the events recounted took place over a period of 20 years, for instance, or that a given event lasted 20 minutes. The duration of the narration is not mentioned at all, as if the activity took no time or were situated out of time. Sometimes the duration of the narrated or the duration of the story, the duration of the real event that is clearly mentioned, whether that is in terms of few years or that is in terms of few months or that is in terms of few minutes. But the duration of the narration is not mentioned that this narration, it took place, uh, for example, 20 minutes or one hour or one month, so that is not mentioned. This duration may play most important role in a given narrative. For example, Tristram Shandia, that is based to a large extent on the fact that the duration of the narration far exceeds that of the narrated. And it is quite similar to the example that I gave you of the travelogue. For example, uh, the travelogue of uh, Mustansar Hussain Tarun, Gharihira. Now that is based on the experience of just one night, which he spent in that cave. But that one night has been extended to many, many years. So um, no, that is the point of narration. That is the duration of the narration. When you read that novel, that novel is based on the duration of the narration. Though so, duration of the narrated, that is, uh, that is, that is quite limited. So it takes much more time to narrate events than to live them. So the duration of the narration that is extended uh, to a longer time or to a longer period. The presentation of the narrated. Now when um, narrated again, I tell you that uh, it refers to the uh, story or it refers to the uh, uh, situation which is recounted, which is uh, stated or which is narrated. Now, how uh, the narrated is presented? There are various ways and there are various techniques uh, in which uh, which can be exploited and which can be used for presenting the narrated. The first one is explicit and implicit information. When you read a narrative, there are uh, certain certain points which are mentioned very explicitly. There is no need to guess about uh, understanding those uh, uh, events at those points. But certain points are kept hidden. And uh, readers, they have to imply, they have to think about their possible uh, meanings. So much of the information imparted is explicitly asserted that is presented in such a way that it can be naturally questioned or denied. For example, uh, Paul went to the movies. Now, this is a sentence and a narrative. Uh, such a narrative, it can be questioned. Such a narrative, it can be answered. For example, it can be questioned in the form of, did Paul go to movies? Or it can be negated, Paul did not go to the movies. So it is, it is very clear. Uh, there is no need to uh, guess about its uh, uh, implied meaning. It is, it is very explicitly mentioned much information may also be communicated implicitly rather than being asserted. It is more or less strongly suggested through contextual, rhetorical, connotative, or other means. For example, get me a sandwich. Now, get me a sandwich, sandwich which, which is followed by a sign of exclamation. Uh, it indicates the status of uh, the one who utters this uh, uh, sentence. It indicates that the one who utters the sentence, he has some authority. He can exercise that authority. And uh, the addressee, he is uh, his subordinate. I, 
uh, I may imply through the command form I use that I'm superior to him since I have the right to order him around. So you, this, this is just one example which shows uh, the authority, the status of the one who utters this uh, sentence. Let me share uh, the message of the coordinator with the, with the SIA. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay. Okay, sir. Uh, we will share uh, that link with uh, the, the rest of the students who are not online. Excuse me? Uh, we will share online recording, uh, sir, with the rest of the students who are not online who have. Okay, issues. okay, okay. Okay, okay. It's all right. So please. Uh, okay, so um, much of the information. Uh, yes, uh, I was talking about this uh, sentence. Get me, uh, go get me a sandwich. <laughs> so sometimes information is uh, mentioned very explicitly, but sometimes it is mentioned implicitly. The readers they have to know or they have to guess about.
No, Zer Khan. He may have left. Sir, your mic is off. We can't hear you. Hello, guys. Uh, hope you all are doing well. Um, I think keep, uh, we... Keep your mic silent. Now, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So I I, uh, I repeat from the point of order. Order that is the second point, and uh, our major uh, subtopic that was uh, the presentation of the narrated. The first point, explicit and implicit information, I have already explained. The second point is order, that uh, uh, there is a proper order and a proper sequence. But this order we find in two different ways. The first option is uh, the order of the uh, narrated, and the second one is the order of the narration. So when a story happens, the real story that has one order, uh, that the same sequence that can be followed, the same order can be followed, but that order can be disturbed, that can be twisted for particular reasons. For example, we have the order of A, B, C, and uh, uh, example in the form of a narrative is John washed, then he ate, then he slept. This is the proper order of uh, that uh, uh, narrative. Now, it is not necessary that the story has to be narrated by following the same order A, B, and C. It might be uh, uh, changed in the form of B, A, C, or it might be changed in the form of C, A, B. Now, John washed, then he ate, then he slept. It can be changed in the form of uh, John ate. The second point that has been brought into the initial stage, after he washed, then he slept. Or uh, the last point, then he slept. It can be brought into the uh, uh, beginning position. John slept after he washed and ate. Now the same, this is just a simple narrative, a one sentence narrative, but it can be extended to the whole narrative in which uh, uh, we have various uh, points and those various points that ca they can be interconnected and then you can develop your own sequence. Sometimes uh, the sequence of the narrative that might be the real sequence that might be helpful. Sometimes uh, just a brief change or a major change in that story or in that sequence or that order that can uh, create more thrill and more interest. So, my point is that there are various sequences and various orders. It is not necessary that you follow the uh, order of the narrator. When you put it into a proper framework of narration, then you have to decide that which order and sequence that is more appropriate. When the narrator presents an event or a series of events before its time, as it were, we have an example of anticipation. So uh, when, 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 when you, when you uh, mention something uh, before, uh, that, that comes under the category of uh, anticipation, there is an example, John became furious. 10 years later, he would come to regret it. Now he did not think of the consequences and began to shout hysterically. So anticipation is just the opposite of retrospection. In retrospection, we move back into the past. But in anticipation, you tell something before it's happening. For example, John became furious. 10 years later, he would come to regret it. Now, this is something which will happen after 10 years. But the narrator predicts it. The narrator anticipates the consequences of something. Uh, and those consequences, they have not... Uh, become clear because they have not yet happened. So sometimes the narrator, he predicts or she predicts. That is uh, under the category of anticipation. But sometimes when he presents an event or a series of events after its time, we have an example of retrospection. You move back into the past. John became furious. 10 years earlier, he had vowed never to lose his temper. This is something which uh, he recalls. Now he forgot all of his resolutions and he began to shout hysterically. So this is the technique of retrospection or moving back into the past. So sometimes 
you present the narrator narrated you present or the narrator presents the narrated with the use of anticipation or sometimes the narrator presents the narrated with the use of the retrospection by exploiting the technique of moving back into the past when the distortions in the chronology of the narrated by distortion i mean when you distort the sequence of the narrated or when you distort the proper order of the narrated so these distortions they are important the terms flashback the flashback this technique is used for retrospection going back in time and flash forward when you go go forward in time you think about the future they are often used so these distortions are not for the sake of just distorting the sequence this distortion of the sequence it creates a thrill in the story and uh, every narrative if that creates a thrill in some of the uh, uh, stories for example in gothic novels this thrill that is the main and primary focus of the writer that uh, it must be based on the thrill it must be based on the uh, on the point of keeping the readers wait for the next something which is which is to happen and then something which is yet to happen okay besides uh, the presentation of the narrated and uh, besides the uh, order we have a third element and that is point of view point of view this is a very simple term which uh, uh, you can easily understand though uh, uh, ramen kenan has used a, take, a term that is focalization which i am not going to explain in this lecture that uh, might be part of the uh, next lecture Uh, but let me explain the point of view <clears throat> uh, according to the understanding of uh, gerald prince which he has discussed in his book narratology the form and functioning of narrative there are three main types of point of view possible uh, in a narrative the first type which is characteristic of traditional or classical narrative may be called unrestricted point of view because there is no restriction whatsoever placed upon what a narrator may describe in terms of it uh, so in most of the narratives there is no restriction on the point of view that uh, restriction uh, that, that 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 is not uh, that point of view is not restricted it doesn't have any boundaries that is quite unlimited and uh, unrestricted the narrated may then be seen from any or all angles at well that narrator knows about each and everything that narrator even he might have an access to the thoughts of uh, the various characters or he might have uh, access to something which is internal or something which is external uh, there are some narrative techniques for example in the first uh person narrative technique or in the homodiegetic nar uh, narrative technique in which character is part of the story so that uh, cannot create uh, an unrestricted uh, point of view that cannot generate an unrestricted point of view because when that character for example pip when he is sitting with his relatives then he knows only about the external happenings those things which he can clearly see those things which are visible he can uh, have access only to the external happenings that character first person character or narrator character or homodiegetic character he or she doesn't have any access to the thoughts of the characters to the internal world of the characters so that is called restrictive restricted point of view but sometimes we have unrestricted point of view and my point is about the unrestricted point of view so such a point of view it is from a god like vantage point beyond time and place from the center the periphery or front so it covers it covers the narrative uh, from all the areas uh, it has an access to all the things which whether internal or external and uh, such a point of view is called unrestricted Uh, point of view in this case the narrator tells more than any and all the characters could know and tell at the time of the situation described for example he never realized that this was the beginning of his downfall now the narrator knows it but the character himself doesn't know it the narrator has an access to something which is either going on in the mind of the character or even something which is not going on in the mind of the 
uh, character, but something, some, something which he should realize later on, but the narrator has already realized that. She did not see him hiding in the bushes and laughing. Now the character does not have an access to uh, see the person who is hiding in the bushes and laughing. But the narrator, the third person, our omniscient narrator has an access uh, to that which is not yet visible. So this is first point of view. The second one, the second type may be called internal point of view. Everything is presented strictly in terms of the knowledge, feelings, and perceptions of one or several characters. The knowledge that the character has, the feelings, what type of feelings the character has, what are the perceptions of that character are even several characters. Now, the narrator has an access to all these internal uh, things. In this case, the narrator tells only what one or several characters could know and tell. Internal point of view may be fixed. And when is it fixed? When the perspective of one and only one character is adopted. Uh, there is an example of uh, a novel. So when one character that becomes the uh, that 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 becomes the source of point of view, only that one and single character from the start of the narrative till the end of the narrative, when that is taken as uh, a fixed point of uh, uh, point of view, so that is called internal point of view, which is fixed. Sometimes it might be variable when the perspective of several characters is adopted in turn to present several different sequences of events. So that is a variable in which we have several characters. Several characters are considered uh, in the framework of point of view. And we can also have the possibility of multiple uh, point of view when the same event or series of events is narrated more than once. The same event is narrated not just for once, rather that is narrated for many times, but each time in terms of a different perspective. Each time this narration, it has a different uh, perspective. It, has a, it, is, it is narrated with a different point of view. So such a point of view is called multiple. The difference between variable and multiple is that in a variable point of view, there are several characters who are included to present uh, the point of view. But in a multiple narrative, we have the same event, that single event, and that is presented by, uh, that is presented in more than once. And each time that narration is narrated or that event is narrated with a different perspective. The third type, which is characteristic of objective or behaviorist narratives like the killers are uh, the hills like white elephants may be called external point of view. So the way we have internal point of view, we can also have the possibility of external point of view. Here, the narrator presents everything strictly from the outside, something which you can see, something which is visible, that is called external. Thus, he would describe a given character's actions or physical appearance, for instance, but he would not describe the character's feelings or thoughts. A narrator is able to describe only those things which are visible to him, which he or she can see. Now, something which he or she cannot see, he or she cannot describe those things. He or she cannot narrate those things. So external uh, point of view, it is very much restricted. Internal point of view that has a wide range of uh, uh, access, but external point of view, it has a very limited range of access. Obviously, the narrator then tells less about certain situation than one or several characters could know and tell. This is the limited range of narration. Now, after this detail uh, about uh, the various uh, narrative possibilities and about the various uh, aspects of uh, narration, uh, we have to decide that how does this detail help us in interpretation of uh, a narrative. Once we have determined that a particular narrative exhibits a certain kind of narrator, what kind of narrator is used, it adopts a certain point of view, what kind of point of view is used in this narrative, or favors a certain order of presentation, which order has been followed in this particular narrative, 
how this uh, narrated is presented uh, in, a, uh, in a in a proper order we can begin to wonder why it does so the significance of uh, the narrator the significance of the point of view or the significance of the proper order of the event that is very helpful in interpretation of uh, a narrative in other words we can ask not only which narrating possibilities a given text has exploited but also why it has exploited them like there is always and there has to be in a, in a research the question of why that is important when uh, for example about the narrative techniques if you are going to uh, use narratology as uh, uh, as an area of your research then you have to ask about the why uh this this word why why a particular narrative technique has been exploited why a particular narrative technique has been used and out of so many options why this particular option has been availed why the rest of the options they have been ignored so it means that there must be a valid reason or there must be valid reasons for the uh, for using that particular narrative technique and as a researcher you have to look for uh the, the 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 effects of that particular narrative technique because in some of the researches uh it is not necessary that you must have a problem of the, the way in action research if, for example as a teacher you face problems so that is a problem oriented research you face problems for example uh majority of the students they have failed in a particular subject and that is a problem for you you have to know that why majority of the students they have failed in your subject sometimes we conduct research in order to enrich a meaning of our text for example in literary research when we apply a particular narrative technique or when we when we try to analyze a narrative or a text uh, in the light of uh, narratology or in the, in the light of narrative techniques so we just try to uh, look for the various possibilities of the new meanings that how can we create new meanings if we apply uh, or if we analyze this narrative uh, this 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 uh, text uh, if we if we analyze it in uh, the framework of narratology so that that that, that can uh, enrich uh, that text uh, in terms of its new meanings moreover such features as uh, degree of reliability variations in distance modes of discourse that i have not discussed modes of discourse which discourse has been exploited in narrative technique uh, our narrative speed uh, affect our interpretation of and response to a narrative and uh, uh, illuminate its functioning is it enough or should i continue uh it's enough sir yes it is enough yes sir, yes, sir. sir. Uh, uh, please uh, share the slides with me uh, through mail okay okay i will i will share those slides with you and uh, uh, for you <clears throat> in the previous lecture i gave you a task about uh, the various models the model of uh, aj cremus yes. and roland barts okay elements and food okay now in this uh, uh, on the basis of this uh, current lecture uh, you have to you have to look for a short story it should be a short story so that uh, we can discuss it easily in a class if uh, if i want to discuss that and uh, uh, today i couldn't uh, discuss your task the previous task but uh, in future i may ask you to uh, discuss any task so you have to be ready okay just keep on preparing these tasks and whenever we have the time so we will discuss those tasks so today's task would be to read a short story and uh, try to uh, analyze that story in terms of uh, uh, the various various elements which i have discussed in today's class whether it is about the duration or it is about the point of view or it is about a particular narrative a narrator or it is about the uh, narrating so the various elements which i have discussed in today's lecture you try to interpret that short story in the light of these elements okay sir is it clear yes sir yes sir 
Okay. Sir, kindly if possible, upload this on portal as well, sir. Okay. If there is any other question about the topic, you can ask. Sir, I no, think it's clear. Uh, not it. We have noted the, uh, the the discussion task. Okay. So should I leave the class? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, thank sir. you very okay, much. Sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 